Hello there, it's Valerie Ling here, clinical psychologist, and also speaking to you uh, in my role as the director and founder for the Center for Effective Living, which is a psychology and wellness practice in Gordon. I'm coming to you live this morning because I wanted to talk to you about the concept of buffers. It's something that I spend some time uh, with clients working through. Buffers basically are the, the space, the physical as well as resourcing space that we can build our, around ourselves for when stuff happens that we do not predict for. That has been my world for the last couple of weeks in terms of just things happening that you think, gosh, if I could plan for all of this, I would have been much better resourced. But of course, this stuff doesn't happen when you at a time when you can plan for things, right? So you've just got to basically do the best you can. And as I was driving home yesterday, I was very conscious of a thought process that was going through my mind. Basically, I had recognized that I had reached the end of my uh, limits <laughs> with regards to whatever tanks that I had filled up were dangerously coming to, to a low. So, you know, things like self-care, relationships, um, your own sense of rest and restoration, all of those things. Now, not because... Uh, they cannot be restored, but because there's too much going on in my world right now that I can't actually find space to actually do the things that I need to do. And if you've been listening to me long enough, you will often hear me say that self-care and being resilient is really an intentional discipline. So the first thing that I noticed that was going through my mind was basically being able to call out stresses. Now, if you've had any uh, idea into the kinds of stresses that Australians experience and you know what the top five are, any kind of change and transition, whether it's work or school or relationships or family, our health, our mental health, they are the call it factors. If that's happening in your world, then you are bound to be experiencing high levels of stress. Number one, just know the categories of stress most people encounter and don't minimize it. Number two, you've got to know what's happening in your personal world as well. You've got to recognize at this point in time, what are my tipping points for stress? And not minimizing it. You might think that your child starting kindergarten is what millions of parents are experiencing, and so you should just suck it up. But there are little things and big things in your world that, that could be actually interacting with that change. So knowing any change or transition, grief and loss, if there has been, uh, if you've moved, if there's been a death of a loved one, even pets. If there are any death or grief and loss issues, that is going to impact you as well. And finally, knowing also your physical stresses, what's going on. You know that ache and pain that you've just been putting up with for the last six months? Well, that actually takes up resources because you're constantly battling with that. So the first thing is being able to recognize the stresses and being able to, to factor in the compounding effect of stress. The second thing that I recognized that was going through my head yesterday was basically, where am I going to deploy the buffers? Where are the buffers so that I can give myself physical, mental, and emotional space to recalibrate? And coming home, I made the decision to cancel some appointments. I hate doing that. This is not my professional appointments, but these will have to do with basically life type things, you know, going to this place to look at that thing or trying to make some decisions while you're on the fly. So basically minimizing and simplifying the degree of movement that you're going to have to make when you're transitioning from one role to another, from work to personal um, from being a, a parent to being an employee. So minimizing the amount of transitions you have to do and basically putting into place very quickly into your schedule and your diary some time for, number one, deep focus so you can catch up on the things that you're falling behind in. And second, some time to just be still and be mindful as a start. So the buffers that I talk about basically has got to do with cut your losses, make some space. Number two, head for some chunks of time where you can have some deep focus and some present mindedness to just ground a sense that you're doing okay. So I'll leave you with those thoughts and hope that you have a fantastic 
day to day.